going on? So one of my other projects I've been working on recently is just for my own reference, for my own, purely for me, reference, some of the most useful code snippets that are not necessarily like snippets like having, you know, tab stopped dplyr filter with whatever, and uh, like, no, like I'm talking like snippets, like a comprehensive, you know, multi-line a chunk of code that serves a encapsulated purpose that is uh, reproducible, portable, and useful pretty much everywhere, ubiquitously in all of my projects. But also, um, the steps I personally follow for my own individualized workflow right now when I'm doing something in R that needs to be comprehensive. Um, this could be something for work, could be something personal where I actually want to develop a package. Um, for right now, I'm kind of, it's it's probably not complete. Uh, I tend to intend to add to this over time, but my workflow is just right, right here. I actually used this today even. Um, I went here, I copied a, a chunk of code I needed for a document and I put it in there and followed a couple of those other steps and got about my day. So what does this look like? So this whole repo is really just some images and my readme document, even the git ignore I don't even need. But all of this is just a readme document. The table of contents hyperlinks to all the sections, but really this is just my way of doing an analysis. Just like I want to an, an, perform an analysis on something, you know, create a new package, fill out your description, um, use, we'll just go through it. So, you know, create a new package. Here's what like uh, a sample of a bare bones description might look like for me. I can just copy this. Mostly it's for like my person details and like the typical license I choose, whatever. Um, for loading table of contents, or table of contents, for loading packages, I found this on Twitter. Somebody posted this where you can actually use this to find all of your installed packages. And if there are any that are not installed, it will install them and then it will load them all. And it's doing this instead of having endless library uh, calling each individual package, um, this will just uh, L apply all li library to each of your um, your package names here. So I can just make a character vector of all my packages listed out there and just efficiently load anything or install anything that's not installed and then load everything. Incredibly useful. I am now using this as like a standard, like this is how I do things now. Um, for to-do management, if I want to do, like if I have a bun like a repo full of um, like a bunch of R Markdown documents, which this happened recently. Actually, it was really helpful when I was doing Bookdown. I kind of found a hacky way of doing um, search for all R Markdown documents in the directory and then um, uh, do to do R or to do or on it. And um, this would show me all of my to do items in all my R Markdown documents. Now, with to do R, it's basically like one of those VS Code plugins where if you have, because Markdown is basically HTML, it's just simplified syntax for HTML tags, which is why you can easily compile and do things with HTML, like actually use CSS to customize your output of um, HTML documents written in R Markdown, which I do, um, because it's all basically HTML. So because your comments in, in R Markdown are HTML comments, unless they're in a specific code chunk, um, you can use the same sort of tags where it says, you know, in a, in a HTML comment, to do, and then whatever your to do item is. Now this package to do R will actually pick up multiple types of tags, to do, bug, fix, hack, fix me, whatever, all those things get picked up uh, and then itemized by, you know, where, what file is located in, and um, that way you could easily like set yourself reminders and things like this that don't appear in your output on an ongoing basis. Use this as your to-do management. And I do use this and I really enjoy that as well. If you have like a package, um, like a whole package, you could just do si oh, a single one-liner and it works. So this would be like a less hacky way of doing it. I'm not sure if a, a book down project counts as a package for this or not. I haven't tested it, but either way, you know, whichever option, it, just finding all your to-do items, really great. Um, just advice to create a data directory and an R directory for to put all your R scripts in, updating your R build ignore or git ignore and or. Um, then we move into, that was all just set up. So now we move into like actually doing some analysis. Uh, we can write, begin writing our R markdown document, you know, give 
you know, overview, some initial analysis, where you got your data, what, what you've done with it, or whatever. Uh, some common advice, never use require or library in a packaged analysis. Um, well, I mean, that's like if you're using a package, if you're distributing a package to somebody like um, on CRAN or something, you don't do that. But I mean, my package loading thing is kind of like, you know, if I'm sending somebody in the office a packaged analysis of something, to run the analysis, you need to have those libraries, which is why you load or install those required libraries. So in that case, kind of don't follow my own advice, but if you're gonna write like a package for distribution to the free internet, um, you might wanna reconsider using those at all. Um, using an R project file, even in a package, obviously, um, you do that so that uh, you can, in R Studio go up here and all of your recent packages you can just open up and it takes you to that directory all those files everything the way you left it is there and it's in that package um, it's also really useful because uh, you can use the here package and that will let you use your project wherever the rproj file is which is the root directory it uses that as the root directory um, for your project so this way if I have um, a data directory and an R directory for my data and my R scripts that are processing the data and then be, the R scripts are being sourced in my R Markdown document in my root directory, then in R Markdown, the R Markdown file, I can use here to say, you know, here, which is basically outputting a string, a file path string that is to the root directory. And then in just quotes, I can just do data or um, R. And then in comma, it's vectorized. Uh, comma, next uh, double quote is the name of the script I am sourcing. And there you go, two pieces of stri two strings and using the here uh, function, then you have basically relative file paths with minimal um, overhead. And it's, I like it better than the like dot dot slash dot slash whatever. Like it, it's just, it makes more sense to me. I like it better than writing out a file path with all the slashes like we typically do with HTML um, in the web languages. So that, and then uh, you know, create your R functions as you need to. Um, I also I do R functions sometimes, um, but also I write whole R scripts for each data source. So if I'm like importing a table or some sort of like if I have a, like a SQL query and I'm returning a bunch of records that have been, you know, twisted, formatted, returned, cross apply, join, whatever, like all this stuff, and I have a tabular data set to return, I might have a separate R script that will then run through like the DBI and ODBC packages. It will run that SQL code as like a string of text through my DBI connection. And it will take that code and then run that through that connection. And then now I have a, uh, like a data frame or whatever. And then I can take that data frame. And if I didn't do all of my stuff in SQL, you could, you know, pipe that data frame through multiple dplyr steps. And then finally do an assignment and assign that to a variable. And because it's assigned to a variable in an R script, when you source that script in your R markdown document, all you get is the end product data frame variable with all the data. So in that way, you could easily just outsource all of your data manipulation, data munging, all that stuff to an R script and with each R script for each data source. So it's all encapsulated in one area. Something goes wrong, you can easily pinpoint the source and you don't have all of that code um, filling up your R Markdown document, which is really just for like your analysis and your final report product. And then if you have uh, multiple types of scripts like data import scripts or custom functions, you could easily just append um, the or prepend the the name of the R function with uh, some sort of acronym that makes something sense some sense to you. Like you could uh, prepend one with like data or um, like data this and then the name of the connection or like um, F U N for function and then the actual name of the R function. So you could easily like separate out in a single directory because you can't have root direct you can't have subdirectories in your R directory in a R package or project. Um, or at least that's what the documentation says. So yeah, writing unit tests with test that. I love test that. It actually makes writing unit tests enjoyable. It reads like English. The, the function is test that. So it's like, okay, we're testing that. 
something equals something. And that's the name, that's what that's the name of the functions uh, is the names of the functions are expect something. And it could be expect equals. And then you put in two things and they should be equal. If they're if they are equal, the test is silent because there's nothing to talk about. It passed. But if they're not equal, then raise a flag or an error or something. And that's what makes unit testing in R so enjoyable is that it's just, it reads pretty much like English and the test suite is just great with test that. So test that I am expect, well, actually you start test that with like test that and then in quotes what you're testing, test that the DBI SQL connection functions. And that could just be like expect equals where you call your DBI connection, damn cats. Uh, you call your DBI connection, and then in the other argument of expect equals, you actually have a, a variable that has a completed DBI connection. Or, you know, that's a bad example, but it is, it is actually a real test I wrote at work to test our SQL connection. So there is that. Um, the next step would be t um, just like testing things, fixing and iterating. Um, basically fix all your errors, warnings, and notes when you run um, R command check or just dev tools check. Uh, document all of your R functions. So if you have um, data import, you can actually do a specific type of R oxygen 2 documentation on data files specifically. I have never done that yet um, on like a custom data source because typically we're just importing from SQL at work. So that's really all I really do at this point. But um, for each of your custom functions, you can provide um, our oxygen to documentation. So you actually produce documents like LaTeX documents. And there's like a little hyperlink for info. Compiling your documentation, it'll create a man directory and each of your functions will have their own documentation. So like for my runes package, um, I have to call it mm, runes. And then I can do runes. And like this documentation here, this documentation you're used to seeing in R, this is actually produced by um, R Oxygen 2 documentation. Uh, what does that look like? Like what does the documentation syntax look like? So for my R package, if I was actually doing some development on it, um, do, 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 uh, I don't have it open. R runes. So my runes function, the actual function itself Here's what the documentation looks like. It's just all this stuff as the header and then the actual function itself. So all of that, there you go, that's it. Um, you document above your function and provide all this stuff and it produces basically LaTeX output and then that's what you see in um, the help area in R whenever you call, you know, question mark, what the heck is this thing? Um, I have a, this is, I actually stole this I think from uh, the book down, from book down which is just a way of documenting with Biblia, with a bib file your packages you've used in R. So because we actually have a packages variable from the loading packages section in the beginning of my document, you could technically just use, um, instead of writing all this, you could actually just write bib with a vector of, instead of a vector, you could just use the variable of the package names and then write the um, bib package or write the write the bib uh, bib file and then have an additional bib file for like for like academic references or whatever and then in the yaml portion having those two bib files referenced in a, a yaml array and there you go all your references packages academic sources etc all of that encapsulated in there and boom um, and then just like some different clean code related things. If you've read clean code by Stephen C. Martin, I have, I don't really do any object oriented programming, so it's not completely relevant, but like in general, the idea of having clean, legible, human readable and human intended code, um, running dev tools, check, checking to make sure that all of your stuff is fixed and there's nothing to be worried about, or it's documented about why it's there using lint R for linting a whole package. So you can see which like common conventions you should employ to make more legible code, having a readme or like an R markdown document that compiles to markdown for a readme. With this whole readme I have right here, I just prefer to write a plain readme instead of using R markdown and compiling into it. It's just easier to do it this way. Um, keeping a change log in my news markdown, uh, news is to the typical um, announcement document for R packages. I basically just treat news as my change log 
in my runes package and I use, this is basically a snippet of a beginning um, change log for semantic versioning where you keep every little item th itemized thing unreleased, released when you released it, and then each f like facet of like what type of change was occurred or, or has occurred and like what about it. So keeping a change log so that you know what you did, when you did it. I mean, yeah, Git is a change log, but sometimes you don't want to have to scroll through a Git log or read all your commits and then open up the files. You can usually just see like a human readable format here. And if you're curious about something, you have the date. You can go and look at the commit history and look at the, the like the code diff, whatever your workflow might be. But at least for me, I, I keep a change log and I use this change log format for all of our work stuff too. And then I'm going to have a ever growing tips section like that you can use this exact uh, piece of text here, a comment, space, text, whatever it is, space, and then four or five of these um, dashes inside of an R code chunk actually adds um, a, an item to the, uh, what is it? What do you call that? Like a outline, document outline. So if I... I don't think I have an R Markdown document there. Uh, I can't do that. Oh, my CV. That'll work. So if you actually add that piece, it'll um, add a new section here. So let's see. Employment is where we're currently at. And then we have um, the employment header, the employment code chunk, and you can see both of those here nested. But inside the employment code chunk, I can actually do um, hello. YouTube space and then one, two, three, four, five, and it actually adds that to your outline. So you can actually document pieces of your code chunk without actually having to have like your only markdown headers in your document outline. It also will add it to this table of contents here in our studio. So all useful tips. And that is my workflow document. It's a work in progress. I intend to continually update this because I actually, I even used it today at work to um, grab my package loading um, script right here that I jacked from Twitter. Um, yeah, I use this and I'm going to be using this in the future to just keep my own head straight when it comes to like, what what is the next step I typically do in development for some comprehensive R thing? It, this is how I'm doing things, or at least this is not going to be like how you should do things. This is how I do things. And if you have suggestions, please feel free to contribute. But this is my workflow as it stands right now and to be edited more in the future. So read through that if you like, enjoy, use it, whatever, have fun. <laughs>